The third one will be Dr. Evelyn Gansquez, who is Director of Workforce Development at the Center for Law and Social Policy here at the nation's capital. She has devoted her 30-year career to strengthening connections among workforce development, education, economic development, and social service policies to help low-income families advance out of poverty. She's a nationally renowned expert, and prior to CLASP, she was at National Governors Association and served in the Department of Labor's Employment and Training Administration. First of all, thank you for inviting me to testify on this important topic. The United States needs a strong, federally funded workforce development system to promote a high-skills, high-productivity economy that provides greater opportunity for all workers. The unfortunate reality is that one in four American workers is earning poverty-level wages, and mo most low-wage workers experience limited, if any, earnings growth over time. Today's WIA system is stretched too thin to adequately support either employers' need for a skilled workforce or to help low-income job seekers and workers build the skills necessary to succeed. Currently, WIA, ma WIA mandates um, to provide universal access to, to services through a one-stop system and other requirements, combined with significant decline in funding since the law was enacted, has led many parts of the system to concentrate on the provision of low-intensity employment services aimed at rapid labor market attachment. These services are provided at the expense of skill development that should be the central focus of the system. CLASP recommends that the following changes be made in Title I adult and youth programs and in Title II adult education to add greater value to the economy and to expand advancement opportunities for low-income populations. First, we recommend a focus on quality training. We suggest setting a floor, such as 50 percent of Title I expenditures on training. Research tells us that to be effective, workforce education and training must be targeted at good jobs available in the local economy. It must be of a sufficient duration to result in employer-recognized credentials that enable people to access jobs that provide family supporting wages and benefits. We do not believe that primary reliance on vouchers by any name is the best way to deliver training services. Adult education authorized under Title II should not be seen as an end in and of itself, but as a beginning of an educational pathway. Research has shown that even those who initially have very low basic skills can substantially increase their earnings if they do not stop with adult education, but if they go on to post-secondary education and job training. We also suggest that Congress encourage great, stronger connections between workforce investment, the Title I programs, and adult education systems. In particular, the Act should encourage the development of programs that blend occupational training with basic skills in English language instruction to accelerate learning and help students gain valuable skills and credentials. Second, we urge Congress to place greater priority on helping low-income youth and adults and individuals with barriers to employment enter and succeed in the labor market. This includes reauthorizing the youth opportunity grants aimed at high poverty communities. Our research has shown that under WIA, there has been a substantial decline in the share of adults receiving training who are low income or have barriers to employment. A reauthorized WIA system should strengthen priority of service requirements, mandate the adjustment of performance standards to encourage the provision of services to disadvantaged populations, and require the system to connect individuals with barriers to employment to necessary support services. Third, we recommend strengthening WIA's catalytic role in the labor market. It is in furthering needed, uh, needed changes in employment and educational policies and practices that workforce investment boards can expand economic opportunity for many youth and adults than they can, then can directly be served in the program. Research suggests that sectoral approaches are particularly promising. Finally, Congress should require consistent national reporting on expenditures on core, intensive, and training services. It should also require the development and implementation of a strong research agenda to inform continuous improvement of the system. 
In conclusion, we believe that the adoption of these recommendations will go a long way towards the creation of a more effective workforce development system. However, the system cannot be expected to meet the critical workforce challenges facing this country without additional funding. We urge Congress to invest in making the workforce system a more effective policy tool for building a stronger and fairer economy. Thank you for providing me the opportunity to testify.